What's up, guys? What's about it all? Welcome to Diablo Immortal. The game we've all been waiting for. That you no longer need a cell phone to play. But you do need a nice, thick wallet. Legend has it, anyway. The pursuit of greatness is unending. So, this is my uh, wizard. And right here, level seven, baby boo. Uh, it seems to have been simplified some, how this game is played. Because as you can see here, the interface, I think, looks just like it does with the cell phone game. You have little buttons right there you can uh, push with your thumb or whatever. So they didn't even change uh, the interface for the PC version. And you just have a couple skills at your disposal that you can use. I don't know how many is the max. I'm guessing four and the left click, apparently. Uh, looks like you can't, so far anyway, assign an attack to the right click. Not yet at level seven or wherever I'm at in the quest line so far anyway. But you can't zoom in. You know what I mean? You can't zoom into this character. Uh, there's no resource? Really? Is it really not resource? I don't think there's resource. You just, you, it's just a bunch of cooldowns. So that kind of tells me is they were really looking to simplify it. You know, if you have resource, you have to use your head a little bit. You have to calculate things in a little bit. You have to be able to reserve and then output. You know what I mean? It takes some initiative and responsibility if you have resource. So maybe that's why it's not here. Uh, because really, they want everyone playing this game, right? And it's 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 quite an emerging market, or beyond that at this point, the whole cell phone game phenomena. Uh, primarily, I would suspect the gambling, uh, the gambling type of cell phone games, which are most of them, a lot of them, a lot of the popular ones. It's just the thing about these games is they're kind of like an endless pit when it comes to how much you can put into it in terms of financing. You can always, and they're, they're probably going to expand the game. Uh, they're going to make, uh, you know, new end game stuff, which is going to require you to have better gear, uh, things of that sort, uh, which then in turn is going to encourage you anyway to want to spend more to make your character better. Now, this is something that has always been around in games. Like, if we think about Diablo 2, um, been around for like, what, 20 some years? Burns. Here's how they come It's a lot like Diablo 3. It feels, it feels kind of a lot like Diablo 3. Uh, maybe just a bit simplified. Not ready yet. Uh, what do you guys think about the combat? But nonetheless, You could always buy things in video games. You could always, uh, in, in online-oriented games anyway, in, in many of them, uh, Diablo 2 namely, there's always been those online stores that are marketed while you're in the lobby, for example, or even in-game. You have spam bots who claim all sorts of websites that you can then go to and purchase items, right? To be honest with you guys, I've done that once or twice, and this was some time ago. But I learned quickly how really it ruins the gaming experience, um, and, and I and I and I started to grasp the concept that in games in general, in video games, if you can get past the envy of your neighbor, the game really is about the spiritual journey. And once you get to the end, as far as I see it, it's just game over. And you just got to go do something else or it gets boring. Like in Diablo 2, once you get the Enigma and the Infinity, the endgame rune words, once you deck out your character and, and min and max them out, it really it, it has quite a, uh, a probability, I think, of getting old fast. Because that's how I feel that happens with me. Isn't that how it works with you? You could argue there are some on the fringe who like to duel, so they like to tap out their characters as, or, or max them out as, as, as far as possible. And then the dueling scene can last, but 
but those those types I think fall along the bell curve. Once you start attaining the endgame stuff, and once you get there, uh, once you get to the destination, it's just the uh, the appeal I think really loses its weight because attaining the stuff is 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 where. Uh, the pleasure, I think, is found, is where the satisfaction is found. It's the hunt and the journey. So, as mentioned, I recall way back, and the site, I think, is still up, where I purchased a couple D2 items on. This was like... This was like 15 years ago, alright? Not even messing with you guys. I purchased, like, uh, a Breath of the Dying and a Death Rune Word or something like that. And I think I spent like $160, which at the time, I probably barely even had a job. I probably didn't have a job. So that was a lot of money for Ice Boy. Uh, I mean, even in these days, to spend that much on just, uh... But I, there's, I have a principle against it, as mentioned. If I were rich, for example, if I had all the money in the world... I wouldn't buy this shit in the games. Like in Diablo 2, I mean, you guys see it. I, I try not to take handouts in general when playing Diablo 2 because it ruins the experience. And I'm trying to make videos continually on this stuff. And the more handouts I get, the game's gonna get old fast. And then why am I going to want to make videos on a game that I think has grown stale? You know what I mean? So I need to not take handouts to try to make that experience continue on and live. Uh, the excitement of, of just having junk gear and running the pits or whatever in D2 and potentially finding an Istrune or something. You can trade for a useful piece of gear or something of that sort. But you see what I mean? It really, it, it loses its appeal, I think. Um, if you're either given the stuff or if you have to purchase it, but the danger in these types of games, it really is, you know, it's, it's legalized gambling is what it is. And there's a lot of loopholes that they go around. Like, there's something, wasn't there a tweet or something about this game with one of the developers where they uh, noted how you can actually buy gear in the game? But what you can buy, of course, are the shards, or not the shards, what are they called? These things right here, these purple things, I can't remember what they're called. Okay, Eternal Orbs. You can straight up... Look, at, can I get them right now? Okay, you have to complete a quest, which I think takes like 10 minutes, and then it opens up this whole concept of purchasing these Eternal Orbs. So you purchase the orbs, and then with the orbs you buy the gear. And there's actually these things as well that you purchase with the orbs and then these things can buy different kinds of gear so it's all centered around buying this crap um and as mentioned it's a bottomless pit man and the thing is if you're say into gambling or whatever say that you play poker at least there you can win money right if you're good at it you can win money but in this game you don't win anything you just win these little things on the screen and uh, that just have absolutely no intrinsic value whatsoever. So they've really honed it down, didn't they? In terms of uh, exploiting our nature and wanting to, to get ahead of our neighbor or whatever, or our homies. You know, because there's always been an appeal in Diablo to be the guy with the high-end items. You know, to stand in town, everyone else can look at you, even though you couldn't really inspect the gear back then. But uh, in some instances, you could know you, you would know what they had. You'd see them teleporting around. You pretty much knew they had Enigma uh, or Nadja's Puzzler or uh, a Tele Amulet. But in general, you knew they had Enigma if they were doing it nonstop without any replenishing, without any whatever. They didn't have a big staff and things like that. You guys get the you guys get the point, right? Or their hat would be green. You knew they had Shaco, which isn't saying much, but... Or they'd have a freaking Mitor around their feet, and they were like a... Uh, they were like a barbarian. And they were in town, so it, it wasn't coming from the mercenary, because if you were both in town, you wouldn't have the Mitor on your feet until you go outside of town if it's from the mercenary. So you knew the barbarian had something really expensive. You knew that he he most likely, uh, if he didn't have a pull arm on, for example, he certainly didn't have pride, rune word, so... 
Well, that would be uh, concentration. He had freaking last wish, okay? Or if you had the redemption aura on the beat, you know, all these things, it was just, you, you'd see somebody with that on. And you were all inspired. You're like, wow, this guy, this guy did the grind, or this guy, or this guy paid up, or this guy put in the town, put in the time, or this guy has the know-how. You know, this guy has the wisdom. You know what I mean? Uh, on what it takes to get these GG items. He's good. He's a good player. So there's always that envy, and uh, but you have to you have to keep it at bay to an extent, um, because it could drive you into madness it could it could drive you into wanting to just buy a bunch of shit for your character or in some instances make a bot and have your bot go around and find you and you're not even playing the game uh the game you 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 you, you set the game up to just play on its own for itself and then you just come and you look at the items and you show them off to the guys in game so they think that you put in the time you know what i mean but either way you approach it I think you're kind of missing the point here, those who indulge in such things, that um, the best time that I ever have playing the game is 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 just early on and, and, and finding my own gear. Even if, say, you don't have time, say that you work a lot of hours, if anything, you could just make the experience last longer in that case. Uh, and I've had times where I limited myself with Diablo, or the same can be said about World of Warcraft. Uh, which I really enjoy, and I'll probably play some Classic WoW in the not-too-distant future. But I noticed in Classic WoW, everyone was uh, using the gold to uh, pay for the bots to run them through the dungeons and level them up. And you'd skip all the content. And I'm new to WoW. I have like a level 40-some character on Classic, 45, 46, 47. Uh, one or two of those. I have two of those. A Warlock and a Wizard. One on Burning Crusade. But... I just noticed how, like, like, the devs, they put a lot of time into making these dungeons early on. Like, I really like the, uh, the pirate one. What's it called? The Alliance dungeon. That first one's like a level 17 dungeon. It's like a big-ass pirate ship, and, uh, there's treasure and, and shit. It's awesome. I can't remember. The Dead Mines? Yeah, I think it's called Dead Mines. The Dead Mines dungeon. Like, I really enjoyed that. And the ones after it. It's just, and there's little items you can find there that are, it's really rewarding getting that and earning it. But I noticed even in World of Warcraft, uh, perhaps even more so there, everyone is just paying the damn bot to rush them through all the dungeons. They don't give a shit what gear they get, and they just rush up to, they, they get to level 60 or 50 or 70 or whatever the cap is, 60. They just get there as quickly as possible so they can start doing the end game content when really you're missing all the, all the nice uh, aspects that these de developers put a lot of time into, and it really builds you up. You know, I think there's nothing like, in a game, uh, you're just noticing slowly from your effort and from your work, your character getting more and more powerful. There's something really, there's something uh, really enthralling about that, man. And you miss all of that. You miss every bit of that if you just buy shit, or if you let people rush you. Or if you just take a bunch of handouts and shit, you know what I mean? Like in my, like I, I get offered a lot of handouts because I make content on the game. So not everyone has that luxury or whatnot. But of course, I've been making good use of them lately. I've been uh, giving them to people who like subscribe to the page or subscribe to my other channel, my Chilling Tales from the Iceman channel. Check that out if you haven't yet. Link in the description below. Things like that. So I can still utilize those handouts. But I, but I, but I, I've been hesitant to want to use them but you got to be cautious with these games man uh, because it is an endless pit like i've heard stories i've, I've seen things all right I, i've seen things with my own eyes not through a fucking screen where someone gets a lot of money and they end up uh putting it into games like these and it'll make you go broke quick you know, this is a way that, like back in the day, they had to, like, you, you bought the game once, right? You spent 50 bucks, and then maybe every two or three years, they'd have an expansion that was, like, 40 bucks or something. So they make, like, 100 bucks max, and then they lose you as a fan eventually anyway, generally. But in these, this is a way where you can spend thousands of dollars on a game. And uh, that's only been out for five or six months, because there's that, there's that human 
nature impulse to want to stay ahead, you know, to want to, uh, that is envious of those around you. There's that, there's that impulse we have uh, to want to showcase how awesome your character is. But the thing is, is, is you've tricked yourself and you, you've tricked everyone else. You just bought that shit. And I think it's a big waste of money. But I mean, obviously, do whatever you want with your money, but I don't intend to buy a single piece of gear on this, obviously. I mean, I really, I don't, I, I might play it a little bit more, but uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. But like Diablo 4, for example, I don't intend to buy a single piece of gear there if there's any way to do that. Although I, I don't think there will be. I, I think this game is kind of a cheap, this, is, this was just a kind of a cheap money grab. And they're reaching for a different market here. Uh, with the Diablo name, I think is exactly what this is. They're just riding on the Diablo name. Like, a lot of this stuff is like Diablo 3. Like, you see the Skeleton King fight. It looks just like Diablo 3. Like, he's even sitting the same way on the same damn throne. Like, they use... It seems like they used a lot of assets from Diablo 3 uh, just to quickly uh, throw this game together and market it and, and potentially drive new newcomers into the Diablo franchise by advertising the shit out of this, and they made it super cheap. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this game, like, there's a lot there's a lot more international appeal, I think. There, there are some places in the world where these cell phone games are, are, are really, you know, they, they generate a ton of money. So, I think a lot of that is what's going on here. But, what do you guys think? I mean, with Diablo 4... See, there, there are uh, the the producers have to make money, obviously. But that's why, if you were to have aesthetic things that you can buy, I suppose that you know isn't a bad idea. Or if you were to have stash tabs, things that don't necessarily uh, propel your character from like here to here, like buying a bunch of gear and loot crates will, like just more stash tabs. You can just hold more shit. Even though, arguably, yeah, you could hold more shit, saturate the economy more, or hold more currency than other characters could, so you could potentially get ahead in that way. But I'm okay with buying some stash tabs. And this is something that probably many won't agree with. But there's there might be another thing I'd be okay with, as cray-cray as it might sound, with a game like Diablo 4. Like, Diablo 3 had the auction house where... Blizzard didn't just print items like what we're seeing here and like what we're seeing with the US dollar kind of They're not just they're not just printing items in Diablo 3 auction house all the items in the auction house were items that we found you know, so it's like we were making our own economy I thought that was okay, and you can already buy all the shit on other websites anyway Like I said the the, the items that I bought 15 years ago like apparently it's 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 not allowed through Blizzard or whatnot for places to sell this shit. But mysteriously, these sites are all still in existence. They've been there for like twenty years, straight up selling shit from the game, right? So those are already there, man. And from the looks of it, from the track record and history, seeing how those same damn sites are still there, twenty some years later, probably every single one of them. It doesn't seem like they're going anywhere. So it seems like <clears throat> there's a few executive decisions that have to be made here. Either make every single freaking item bind down equip and your character finds it. Or let the chips fall as they may and accept this fallen world as it is. In its current iteration anyway. And embed a freaking auction house into the game again. Because in that case... Hell, those who are inquiring and resourceful could actually make money. I mean, I remember I made a couple hundred bucks on the auction house in Diablo 3. Because I knew better at that point. You know, this was, this was, uh, this was, uh, a, a Iceman with, with some leveling up here. Because when I bought the shit in D2 and I was this little duck, I was ignorant and stupid. But no, then Diablo 3 came out and I leveled up some. I was like, okay, I'm not going to buy my own stuff because I knew that totally ruins the gaming experience. But what I am going to do is, hell, I am sitting on my ass playing this game. I don't even know how many hours a day. Maybe I'll put some stuff up on the auction house and make some money. So that's what I did. 
Not to say I would do that again. But I mean, as a content creator, hell yeah. If that's how it would be, I'd take handouts from, from you guys. And I'd just sell that shit and make money. But I wouldn't apply any of that money back into the game. Because like I said, the journey is where it's at. The spiritual journey is where it's at. It's earning it is where it's at, man. And I found this in all the games. Same thing with World of Warcraft. Same thing with Diablo. Uh, even Chico's. It's like Chico. It's like back in the day. You'd have the Game Informer magazines or, or cheat tips and tricks magazines. You'd have all that shit for Sega Genesis and SNES. You do that, the game just sucks then. You type in all the cheats, the game just sucks. You know what I mean? So I learned back then, don't use the cheats. I was like, you gotta... I was like, you're ruining the game. Like, this game you just spent 50 bucks on, or you rented from Blockbuster, rather. You're gonna be sick of this in about 30 minutes if you use all the cheat codes. But if you don't use any cheat codes, this game could last you all damn weekend. And you could have your boys come over, and you could try to beat this or that. And it's gonna be... it's gonna be a freaking spiritual journey, man. So what would I rather have, you know? Just a... A half hour of, of typing in all these fucking codes and and uh, uh, just just face rolling everything in the game and it, and all of a sudden you see all the content and you didn't have to put anything in to get there, you, no blood, sweat, and tears, nothing. Or you'd rather have a struggle, an adventure, you know what I mean, with your boys that lasts who knows days, sometimes weeks, months, uh, and then at the end, just maybe get to those heights, you know, reach those uh, heights and accomplishments. It's the same sort of thing, man. I mean, as far as I see it, buying the shit in the game, or however they want to word it, buying these little eternal things, then buying gear with that, that's just cheating. And it's stupid, too. Because, uh, like I said, there's no intrinsic value in this shit. It's an endless money pit. It's cheating, it's stupid, and it's, uh, it's an endless money pit. And you're probably doing it out of envy. And all those other things, and and you're and you're you're, and on top of that, on top of losing money. For nothing, uh, other than ego and envy or whatever, you're also robbing yourself. You're robbing yourself of a potentially good time. You know, you're robbing yourself of a journey, man, and of growth. Hell yeah. But that's just the thing. Is is with Deep War, for example, <clears throat> I wouldn't give a shit if they make the auction house again. As long as they keep it contained in our economy, and there's just not endless items that Blizzard puts up that we can just buy. Because in Diablo 3, they didn't do any of that. And I really wouldn't give a shit if they did that, because the site's already there anyway. You know, if we really wanted to, I mean, guys are doing it all the time. In D2R, you know, they're doing it all the time. They're, they're going and buying shit, or they're botting, and uh, who knows? They're just doing all that shit anyway. I mean, I wish they would get, I wish the botting thing would, would come to a close, but I don't know if they're ever going to be able to do that. Uh, but the selling shit on third-party sites is already there. So, if we want Blizzard to have incentive, you know, to keep producing better content in the game, they're probably going to need some streams of income. And that's how you do it. You embed the damn auction house into the game, and then they can take a cut from all of our transactions. It's like, it's like eBay or Poshmark or some shit. You know what I mean? But as long as they don't create those fake items and saturate the hell out of the market with them, then everyone can just buy them straight up from the beginning or whenever for that matter. Just as long as they never do that, it could be a, a sustainable economy. And my going into that, I wouldn't buy anything for my character that can help them excel in progression. Other than something like stash tabs or... Um, Maybe aesthetic, but I, I really don't like the idea of buying shit for the aesthetic. I like it when your items look as they do on your character, as they do in the inventory. And the aesthetic thing, you like change the look of it on your character, but it still looks the same in the inventory. I just don't, I don't like how that is. I, I feel like that's very unimmersive. But I mean, let me know what you guys think about that. Are you going to try out this Diablo Immortal game? And uh, what are your thoughts on these matters? If you will like this video, hit the thumbs up button, become a channel member or a patron if you want to support me. Links in the description below. Thank you to my supporters. May your finances be blessed. And may you have many wives. Peace with you.